In this video, I will be walking you through the process of flashing an image to the Raspberry Pi. Before we begin, I'm going to talk about the hardware we're going to be using. The first is going to be a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus that you see on the screen, which you most likely have on hand. The next is going to be a micro SD card. As you can see on the screen, I'm using an ONN 32 gigabyte micro SD card. But for this process, an SD card of around 8 to 32 gigs will be sufficient. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and insert your micro SD card into the SD card slot located in your laptop or PC. As is referenced in your operation guide, before we can begin flashing an image onto the SD card, we need to check that it is properly formatted. To check if the SD card is formatted correctly, open up the file explorer. On the left hand side, click this PC. Here you should see your micro SD card. In my case, it says SDHC boot R. Identify which it is for you and right click. Scroll down and select format. In the pop-up window, we're going to go over to where it says file system. If the selection says FAT32, you're all set. If not, click the drop down menu and select the option that says FAT32 if available. If this option is not available, you need to acquire a different SD card that is compatible. Next, click start. A warning message will pop up. Click OK. Once the format complete message pops up, click OK. Next, we're going to acquire the software application needed to flash the image. The software we're going to be using is the Raspberry Pi Imager. Open up your browser and navigate to the Raspberry Pi website. The link you will need is provided in the description below as well as your operation guide. Scroll down until you see install Raspberry Pi OS using a Raspberry Pi Imager and click the download button. By default, the application should save to your downloads folder. This is optional, but I suggest creating a specific folder in which all your Scuttle and Raspberry Pi related files will be stored. I have already done that, so I will go ahead, go ahead and save the application in that folder. Next, we're going to run through the installation process. Navigate over to the folder in which you have the downloaded file saved. Click on the downloaded file and follow the installation wizard. Once that is complete, you should currently land on a page that looks like the one you're currently seeing on screen. If not, go to the search by the Windows icon and type Raspberry Pi Imager and click on the icon that pops up. Lastly, before we begin the process of flashing the SD card, we need to get the Scuttle image we're going to use. Open up your browser and navigate over to the Scuttle GitHub link provided to you in the operation guide. The link is also provided in the description below. Download the image and be patient because this takes a little bit of time. Once the image is downloaded, open up the Raspberry Pi Imager application. Under operating systems, select choose OS. In the window that pops up, scroll down to where it says use custom and select you will be prompted to navigate over to the folder in which you have the image file saved. Select the Scuttle image file and click open. Under operating system, you should see the name of the Scuttle image file selected. Under storage, select choose storage. Here, you should see a window prompting you to select the SD card in which the image will be etched onto. Select the SD card and under storage, you should see the name of the SD card selected. Now to flash the image onto the SD card, click right. A warning message will pop up. Click yes. This process takes some time. So once again, be patient. Once the right process is complete, a write successful message should pop up prompting you to remove the SD card from the reader. 
click continue. Once the SD card has been flashed, we're going to begin the process of booting up the Pi. For this process, you're going to need your Raspberry Pi, your flashed SD card, and a micro USB to USB cable. First, we're going to pick up the Pi, flip it over to its back end. On the back end, there is a slot in which you can insert an SD card. The SD card can only go one way into the slot, so be careful that you insert the SD card correctly. Once the SD card is inserted, we're going to grab our micro USB cable and insert it into the port on the Raspberry Pi. Once that's done, we're going to insert the USB cable into our laptop to boot up the Pi. You should see a solid red light and a flashing green light. The green light will stop after a few seconds and only the red light will stay on. This indicates that the Raspberry Pi has successfully booted. Note, for Raspberry Pi versions 4 and up, a USB to USB-C type cable will be required to boot up the Pi.